and get saved in this church. Just to prove to me that God's a God of everything, everywhere, anywhere, anytime, God. He's bigger than our boxes. Would you listen today to the Holy Spirit speak prophetically about the prophetic through Brother Matt? Would you ask God to give you something poignant that you can chew on even after hours? We're not here to promote a certain style of anything. I promise you, that's not an agenda we have in the church. Our agenda is chasing God. Anywhere He breaks out. If He breaks out at Grace Point, and He's not breaking out here, y'all come here if you want to. I'm going to be up at Grace Point. <laughs> I have no affinity with this church building. Come on. This is not, I promise you, if he comes to the Methodist, I'll be there. Amen. If he breaks out with the Catholics, I'm going to run. I'm not tied in to these blue chairs. Amen. It's just Jesus. And by the way, Amen. Matt and his family have a burden from the Lord for Japan. So if some Sunday... You find out through the grapevine that they're on a plane going to Japan. You just best raise your hand and say, so be it. Praise God. Because if the door opens up and the money's there, they're not going to be here. Because they've got a burden for Japan. Amen. I wouldn't want it any other way. I hope we all live with a burden on our heart. Amen. Something from the Lord that burns like fire inside our bones. I welcome God to get a hold of all of us and send us out of this place and bring a whole new crew in. <laughs> I and all of us are dispensable. We bless the Lord for bringing, bringing us on. <clears throat> The money this morning before you leave. We don't ever pray over the money, but I want to pray over the money specifically for two things. We have an electric bill. Somebody needs an electric bill paid. And there's a car that somebody in the church has got that won't, that won't act right. And we need to get it fixed. Uh, if you've got some extra, you put them to play. We just thank the Lord for His provision. Brother Andy, would you pray over the finances? Please. Not just this finances, but would you pray over all of our finances? There's a few people in the church whose work is, is slack right now. And they need a boost financially. Heavenly Father, we come to you because we know that you love us and you hear us when we call. Father, you live in a reality that is real. And oftentimes our reality says... It's hopeless. But that's a lie, Father. And we come to learn and know that you break through those realities, Father. And supply all our needs above whatever we dismiss the children first. So, Father, we are lifting up these that are struggling with car payments and with other finances, Father, and with lack of work. Father, I ask you to open up the floodgates. Amen. Father, pour it in on them, Father. Just like you did to Peter when you asked him to put the net over on the other side. There were yes. so many fishes. Yes. They couldn't hardly haul it all up, Lord. I ask this kind of blessing on all those here, Amen. Father, that are calling out to you. Amen. For you are our provider. Amen. You are our all in all. Amen. And we praise you and give you the glory for it Amen. right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and dismiss the kids. Maybe not my kids, though. I don't know. Father, I just thank you for your word this morning. Thank you.
You said as we open our mouths, you'll fill it. Thank you, Lord. So this morning, I just open my mouth to you, Father. Grant that to him, Father. Praise your name. Fill his mouth. We thank you for a word from you this morning. Last night, the Lord gave me a dream. I was driving a car, and I saw an old eagle sitting on the hood of my car. And it was kind of decrepit, looked like it was about done. When I got to my destination, I realized that the eagle had laid four eggs on the, on the hood of the car. And one of them had already hatched. And it was a little baby eagle sitting on the hood of the car. The Lord had been impressing on us for the prophetic to be birthed in this church even more. Eagles represent prophetic. And I, you know, I think the old eagle was just representing a, a deposit of prophetic movements of the past into this, into this place. And, you know, the, the eggs were what he wants to do in us right now, the prophetic that he wants to release in this place. And I remember thinking... It, it was dangerous for these eggs to be sitting on the hood of the car. If I move the car, I'm going to have to be really careful because, you know, they're, they're just little baby eagles and eggs. And it wouldn't be safe, you know, for them to be rolling around or falling off. So I think he's, you know, he's saying in that, that what he's giving us is precious. That we have to take good care of it. Guard what he's giving us, yeah. So this morning, I'm going to talk about how that prophetic that he's giving us relates to music and worship. And I, I discovered in some of my research that this isn't really a new concept. He's been doing this for a long time. So let's, uh, I, think, I think I'm just going to kind of bullet through a few verses here at the beginning, and then we'll read some together in a little bit. In Exodus 15, after they had crossed through the Red Sea, Moses sings a spontaneous song in that moment. He says, I'll sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and its rider. He's thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he's become my salvation. He's my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. There's another spontaneous song that Deborah sang after their victory. She sang, when leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. That's Judges 5. And, you know, these are actually just little snippets out of those spontaneous songs. They're a lot longer when you read them in the verses. That first one was in uh, Exodus 15. They had to have been speaking, and they had to be, have been singing in the Spirit. There's no way that somebody's just going to come up with, with all of these words instantly on the spot. In 2 Samuel 22, 
David after being saved from Saul. He sings spontaneously, the Lord lives, blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You've delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. He is the tower of salvation to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. This one's in Luke 1, the Song of Mary. Can we have a woman read that one for a minute? It's uh, Luke 1, 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. Hop on. For he has regard, for he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. The Holy One is his name, and his mercy is upon generation after generation. Continue. That's fine. <laughs> those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his own. He has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hunger, hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever, and Mary stayed That's okay. with her about three months and then returned to her home. Thank you. Yeah, these are all examples of spontaneous songs sung right in the moment to the Lord. But I also realized in, in my research that many times the prophetic goes hand in hand with music. Let's turn to First Chronicles 25. Verse 1. It says, Moreover, David and the captains of the army separated for the service some of the sons of Asaph, of Heman, and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, stringed instruments, and cymbals. And then down at verse 6, it says, All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord with cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the authority of the king. So the number of them with their brethren who were instructed in the song of the Lord, all who were skillful, was 288. First Samuel 10, 5. This was when Samuel was anointing Saul. It says, After that you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you'll meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with stringed instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they'll be prophesying. What is it about music that goes hand in hand with prophecy? 
I think for one thing, you know, the atmosphere of heaven is always full of the worship of God. When we bring the atmosphere of heaven here on earth, it invites him to open up to us and, and release his word to us. This one's fun. It was a, a song that was taught directly to Moses from the Lord in Deuteronomy 32. It says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as rain, my speech distill in the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is a rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. The prophetic songs are not, not just spontaneous. You know, he, he taught this to Moses so that Moses would teach it to the Israelites and so that they would sing it amongst themselves and remember the rest of the song is kind of scary. It's, he's talking about when they're going to betray him and but he taught it to them so that they would have remembrance going back to what makes music and prophecy interesting a few years ago I I just I saw this video that was showing how when you play specific notes in a speaker and you put a piece of metal over it. Has anybody seen this? You put a piece of metal over it and you drop salt onto the metal plate and you play notes through the speaker, specific notes, the salt will actually form into a picture. I encourage you to look it up. It's pretty awesome. So they've got this tone generator connected to a speaker and they just keep turning it up to higher frequencies. And as it hits specific frequencies, the picture on the the metal plate where the salt has formed into specific patterns, it actually changes for different frequencies. And it it produces these beautiful images There's something about sound and frequency. Let's go to John 4. Uh, somebody want to read that starting with maybe verse 20, 21, 22? Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. And the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Mm. What does it mean to worship in spirit and truth? Father, we're asking you that. What what does it mean to worship you in spirit and truth? Give us a revelation. When we worship him with prophetic utterance, we're in the spirit.
We're worshiping him in spirit. And when we sing songs of his truth, we're worshiping him in truth. When we're preparing for worship on Sundays, throughout the week, we're listening for what the Holy Spirit wants to do on Sunday. And many times, the songs that we choose line up directly with what's being spoken prophetically and even, you know, the word bring, being brought. But also many times, he shakes us out of our comfort zone. And he does something different, something unplanned. I don't know if you notice, but, you know, it's not all exactly what we have planned <laughs> on Sunday. Sometimes he, uh, he wants to do a completely different song, or sometimes he just wants to speak to a specific truth in the moment. And we're listening carefully while we worship for whatever he wants to impart to us in that moment. But I want to say that it's not just for the worship team. We all have access to the prophetic, every single one of us. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. The Amplified says, Pursue this love with eagerness. Make it your goal. Yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church, but especially that you may prophesy to foretell the future, to speak a new message from God to the people. And then down at verse 24, it says, but if all prophesy, if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he's convinced by all. He's convinced by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God, and report that God is truly among you. So I encourage you to, to ask him for the prophetic in your, own, in your own life. Ask him to give you words of knowledge and speak out his words Sing out his words as we're singing. If you have a song from the Lord during worship, sing it out loudly. We'll be quiet if we hear you. <laughs> or we'll start singing along with you. Can we talk about tongues for a second? Would that be okay? So, you know, another way that, that we can sing in the Spirit is with tongues. In that same chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, 13, it says, Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. A lot of times in my worship at home, he'll lead me to, to sing in tongues and then give me interpretation right then. Or sometimes not even give me interpretation. 
but that's okay because it's singing to him. It's funny how scared people get of tongues sometimes just because it sounds weird. But, you know, in, in First Peter it says, do not forbid the speaking in tongues. So if you have a prayer language and you want to sing out in, in tongues, I encourage you to. For me, it helps to connect more quickly with what he's doing in the spirit. First Timothy 4, it says, Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid hands on you. It says, Practice these things, immerse yourselves in them, so that all may see your progress. So it's okay to practice the prophetic too. I want to talk for a few minutes about what my prayer is for our worship here. In 2 Chronicles 20, let's turn there for a second. I apologize for throwing so many verses at you. I'm a man of few words. This is the story of Jehoshaphat when a great multitude of enemies was coming from all around. So this is uh, 20, verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it, and have be built your, you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before the temple in your presence. For your name is in the temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. O oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All Judah with the little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of the Ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Je Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. 
Then the Levites of the children of the Kohites, Kohathites, and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. We, in this area, have a multitude of enemies all around us in the spirit. As we seek him, he gives us strategy. As we sing to him, he sets ambushes against our enemies. Ambushes against the spirit of addiction. Ambushes against alcoholism. Against pornography. (coughs) Father, we set ourselves... We set ourselves in declaration that you fight our battles. As we sing to you and worship you, you fight our battles. We agree with you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing in this county, in this in this church. We thank you that you're putting our enemies under our feet. My other prayer for our worship that we would make prophetic declarations for what God wants to do. We read last week in 2 Kings about the ditches that that God commanded to be dug. What I realized was that before the word was given to Elisha, He asked for a musician to be brought so that he could hear the word of the Lord. He said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. Mm -hmm. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. And my my last point for my prayer for our worship 
is the manifest glory of God. We've seen glimpses of his glory. And I feel the momentum of what he's doing in that. But I know there's more. Let's go to Second Chronicles 5. Five verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites who were the singers, and all those of Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Now this is, this is after the completion of the temple with Solomon. And they're about to bring in the Ark of the Covenant. Verse 13. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good and his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. And King... In King James, it says at verse 14, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. In the Old Covenant, if they wanted the, if they wanted the presence of God to be with them, they needed the Ark of the Covenant. But in this new covenant, he's literally broken out of the box. He tore the veil to the Holy of Holies. Yes. Yes. We don't need the ark of his presence in the house of the Lord for his glory to fall because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And where two or three are gathered, he's there. And he inhabits the praise of his people. We have so many promises that he's going to be with us, that he's going to meet us with his presence. When we let that revelation seek in, faith will rise up in us. As we come in one mind and one accord, full of faith, that he will meet us here. His presence will fill this place like it did in the temple. And we'll all be able, unable, to, un, unable to stand. That's my prayer for our worship. <coughs> Father, make us one. Make us one. Let us come with one voice and worship you. Let us be filled with faith, knowing that you will accomplish what you promise. Let us be a people that seeks you in unity, with one heart. And we're not asking for signs and wonders, we're asking for you, God. You you are our portion. <coughs> Psalm 
some of the most fruitful times in my walk with him are the times that Michelle and I chose to worship him every single day for a season. And sometimes that was not so easy. <laughs> sometimes the enemy would come in and try to make us feel like we didn't actually want to worship. And those actually ended up being the times where he would come in strongly and reward us for diligence even when we didn't feel like we wanted to seek him. <clears throat> I encourage you to take his presence with you wherever you go. We are now the ark of his presence. We carry his presence everywhere we go. I encourage you to have a lifestyle of worship outside of church. Ephesians 5 says, Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making, mu making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. I think in our culture, we've kind of lost the, uh, the ability to sing randomly in the middle of our daily lives. That was something that was obviously a precedent for, for the Hebrews. Let's not be afraid to sing whatever he puts on our heart just to let him fill us with joy wherever we are. <laughs> Father, we ask that you seal that in us. You make us a people of worship to you. We ask for gifts of your spirit. We pray earnestly that we may prophesy. That unbelievers would be would be so floored by what they see, what they hear from you. Let us be a people that can speak to the heart of the unbeliever and sing prophetically over them whatever is going on in their lives, whatever it is that you want to speak to them. Father, we ask that you, you make us worship warriors. That you would fight our battles while we worship you. And we pray for your manifest glory to fill this place even more as we come in faith knowing that you will be here with us. In Jesus' name. If it's okay with you, I'd like to worship a little more. <laughs> hey, Matt. Before you go on, can I, um, I was just back here, um, and I kept hearing at least twice that my deliverer is coming. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I feel like it, it's definitely for me, but I feel like it's for someone else in here that feels like they have been stuck in a spot. You came to the Lord before, but you've been stuck somewhere and you've been asking God to bring you out. You've been asking God to rescue you from the belly of the whale. And God's saying, my deliverer is coming. I'm on the way. I'm going to deliver you today. I'm going to deliver you.